Hey, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Tesla integration into Home Assistant. I'll be talking about how you get that set up, what's available within Home Assistant, how that integration actually is better for the power walls in a few instances, and we'll finish up with some automations in Home Assistant involving the Tesla. We'll be using the Tesla custom integration today, and that can be found in Hacks in Home Assistant. So if you aren't familiar with that, it's H-A-C-S, that's the community-driven store for the different apps and different integrations. And you will need the Auth for Tesla app, A-U-T-H, for Tesla app if you're running an iOS, um, but you know you can just look at the uh, current integration for Home Assistant and make sure you have what it says you need. Um, let's get right into what you can do within Home Assistant. All right, now we're in Home Assistant. You can see I have the Tesla Powerwall as well as the Tesla custom integration. So let's jump right in here and we'll look at Lola, which is our vehicle is a Model Y 2023. And we have a couple of controls that were available, but seem to be um, you know, non-functioning at this point. And that's the heating of the seats and the steering wheel as well. With that being said, you know, you can change the other items that are here. So we can change the charge limit. Um, you can unlock the charge port, you know, do different things with the charge door. Um, other doors we can lock and unlock. We can change the amperage. Um, you can actually, the heated steering wheels down here is an option now rather than being up top. So we have different, you know, ways to do things sometimes. You can flash the lights, open the frunk, and um, you can heat apparently the front two seats, but not the, uh, not the rear seats anymore. You can press the horn button. You can do the remote start, set the HVAC sentry mode valet mode, um, open the trunk, and then open the windows as well. And I believe that's a ventilation opening of the windows there. As far as sensors go, you can see the arrival time, you know, whether or not it's sleeping, the battery percentage, the charging information, We'll go to the distance on, to arrival. So if you want to know how long until it made it to its destination and maybe link that with, you know, where its des destination is, you could do some automations, the status of the doors, parking brake range, and then some other neat things down here. Um, I use the shift state. We'll get to in a little bit with the automation. We have the temperature. You can do inside or outside. So you could have different automations. You know, if it's really hot inside the car, but not as hot outside the car, maybe you vent the windows, you know, trigger that based on uh, potential for the weather as well. Or if you have it in a garage, you could do it based on the fact that it's at your house or something like that. It has the tire pressure. So you can, you know, expose that, maybe put that on a dashboard and say, say, you know, whenever the tire pressure is low, it, you know, changes a different color or maybe it's conditional and only shows up on the dashboard if the tire pressure is low. So you can do a lot of things there um, and you can see you know whether or not the user is present that type of thing you can configure the overheat protection i'm not sure why that's not up top and then the diagnostic one of these is really interesting because even the emissions test we'll get that that at the end but not really diagnostic um, you can look at the location tracker so it is currently in our garage so it does say home right now and it says you know whether or not you want to pull it and what the interval is tells you if there's a software update so it's actually pending an update right now and that shows up within home assistant in the software update area so if you have you know a core update or something it shows up in that same section there when you have an update for your car so that's pretty neat so let's go back to the emissions test and i'll press that and you'll hear what that does and you get that fun sound. Now I'm going to go into the Powerwall section because the Tesla custom integration actually provides a different setup and some different features than what the Tesla Powerwall integration home system provides. So if we go into this, you can see that you can change the battery reserve percentage for your Powerwalls. You can change the energy exports options here, the grid charging, you know, whether or not it's going to charge off the grid, you know, during uh, low cost times or when, when needed for different purposes. Um, and the operation mode, so that'd be if you're doing time-based control or if you're trying to be self-sufficient, whatever that control is. The other thing I want to point out is the power wall percentage in here, the battery percentage, actually seems to work better than the one that's in the Tesla power wall integration. And it's, uh, I guess they're both 
sort of live, but this one seems to upgrade, update quicker versus the one that's in the Tesla Powerwall, which I don't know why that is. Um, but there are a couple of things over in the Tesla Powerwall, you know, um, app that it, are not in this. So I'll just jump over there. And the main one I want to point out here is the off grid operation. So in this one, you can actually tell it to take you off the grid. I also utilize this integration for the grid status to know when the you know grid went down. And I do that because this is a local integration, which is the, you know, the one benefit you get out of the Tesla Powerwall integration that and you can take yourself off grid using it. Um, but everything else I think works better on the Tesla custom integration. So let's jump back over there. And I'll talk about the automations. So for the automations, I'm going to skip the first one because that's not really uh, the first in chronological order that happens. First one that I'm going to start with is at the bottom. So the prep for drive. So what that does is when it's approximately time for my wife, you know, about 15 minutes before my wife leaves work, it checks to see the location of the vehicle. If it's at her work, it'll prep it for the drive. So I'll turn on the HVAC, get everything just the way she likes it. After she leaves work, then is where the next one comes into play. That's at the top. And that's where it says, you know, if she left work, let's check the location of the Tesla. And that's because she doesn't work that far from the house. And it's going to be important that we know the status of the Tesla while she's driving home. That leads us to the third item that's location open the garage door for my wife or I. So when we're driving home and we enter our home zone and home assistant, our phones do, what it does is it checks the Tesla and says, what is the drive status? Is it in drive or is it in park? And, you know, or something else. And if it's in drive, it'll know that we're probably driving that. And when we come home, it'll open that bay versus the other bay where we park our van. So it knows, you know, which vehicle we're driving at that point based on the Tesla gear shift. And again, it's not perfect, but definitely a good indicator because we are, it's pretty rare that we're both driving exactly the same time and one of us comes home. If that happens, then we actually have to manually do it. But, you know, first world problems. And the last automation is actually the second one that we have here. And that one unlocks the charger door when you press the uh, Pico button. So that's a uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, another automation that you don't actually see here is we do have an NFC automation that does the same thing, where if I tap my phone against it, I can unlock the charge door. Um, and the important part of that is it's unlocking the charger. So we can pull that out because I don't have a Tesla charger here. I have the Grizzly brand. So I'll link that below in case you're interested in that one. Works awesome, but it doesn't have the, you know, one button press or, and release. So I do need something to initiate that. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos.